guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is marie mado and this is kingdom life daily i am so excited about today's video because we are talking about how to choose the right husband especially for my christian sisters um and to start off i want us to talk about just like the major mistake that I, I i feel like we make as christian women and that we need to be careful of as christians uh when we are talking about choosing a partner like our first criteria or our first and most important criteria is that he has to be a christian the that is that's not wrong that's okay that's perfect you're supposed to choose a christian the problem that we have is how we um measure or determine if a guy is a christian or not like we are talking about how the how does he pray or does he even pray does he believe in jesus does he go to church does he serve a church and sometimes when we see those superficial things uh we think that that's enough to determine that hey yeah he really is a christian and yeah so yeah he's a good partner and he, this will be good the the thing is um prayer is good uh, but it's not the standard uh going to church is good but it shouldn't be the standard because even demons go to church okay girl um and what else serving in church again some people go to church just because they enjoy playing the drums they go to church maybe just because they enjoy playing the guitar they may go to church just because they like the environment they like to be around people i was literally literally just listening to a podcast i was talking about how some people literally just go to church just for the community and being around positive people etc 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 so if your standard is solely based on whether the person goes to church or not whether the person serves in church or not whether the person whether the person prays or not you are um, setting yourself up to be deceived because you want to look for somebody who um, bears the fruit of the spirit in their actual lives. For for example, if somebody you see that the person is maybe prayerful, but once they finish praying that their life has nothing to do with the way that the word of God says that we should live. They don't live a holy life, but maybe they're always praying. That's not that's that's not like there's a disconnect there that you need to recognize that's a red flag <laughs> it's a red flag okay so don't just be like oh my gosh girl he can pray down a storm oh my gosh this guy this guy can pray great words great when he finishes praying is his life reflecting a genuine and intimate relationship with god because that's 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 what determines if he's a real christian or not if he's serving in church if he goes to church again does his actual life um show the fruit of the spirit does his actual life show intimacy with uh with the holy ghost and even if you're not close enough to the person to determine this originally you can look at their relationship with the people around them with their family with their friends with their siblings you will be able to tell a lot by the, the by uh the relationships that they have even to the the way that they talk the bible says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so even listening to them you will know if the things that they're praying and the things that they're saying because sometimes even a pastor He's a pastor, he's preaching, he's handsome and all of that. And you think, oh my gosh, I found myself a man of God. But then he doesn't, his prayer life doesn't match anything that he does, anything in his actual life. So you don't want to ignore that. So don't, if you've been the Christian uh, woman making that mistake, girl, you need to go sit down and re re rewind, Brrr, go back. That was my little rewind sound. You saw that? Brrr, brrr. Go back, sis. Go back to God and ask the Lord to really show you who this person is, not who they present themselves as, not the fact that they go to church, not the fact that they pray, not the fact that they serve, but who are they really? Ask God and then take an inventory of their relationships. How are they? Uh, how is the fruit of the Spirit being made manifest in their lives? Okay, so that's the big misconception or the big mistake that I feel my sister is making uh, that I want I want to address. Make sure that his life actually matches um the life of a true christian okay so the first thing we're going to talk about so how to choose the right person the first thing is children so at the beginning i was talking about lifelong partner the thing about christian marriage is we don't want to just think about just our life we want to have a god mentality to be able to think generationally when god is dealing with us uh we can even see the example with abraham when god was dealing with abraham and his wife having a child he wasn't just talking to abraham and his wife he was talking to abraham about generations he says you look at the stars if you can count them that's how many children you're, you're gonna have abraham literally only had one well not only had one child but with his wife sarah he only had one child and and but from that today we who are not even jewish 
Jewish or consider children of Abraham by faith. So again, God thinks generationally. When God is talking to us, he's thinking long term, beyond your life lifetime. And that's the mentality that we need to have when we're choosing a life partner. Is this somebody that you will, you will be okay raising your children? Is this somebody that you will be okay with uh, um, another version of them walking around the earth? <laughs> um, um, I feel like I'm talking too fast because I'm excited. Let me calm down. Is this somebody that you'll be okay with um, your child looking like, right? The other day I caught myself thinking a thought and it just it just blew my mind and I was so grateful to God that, that, that I could even think that. And I was thinking, I would love to have a son because I honestly believe that the world needs another one of my husband because the man is so amazing and so, so awesome. And I thank God for that, that I believe that another little girl would really benefit from having a husband just like my, 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 my husband. He's already taken, <laughs> of course. So I, I, I was just thinking that to myself, like I would love to have a son because I want him to be able to raise another man after himself, another man like him so that the world could have another him in the earth. Like that, so that mentality, if you don't know my husband pers personally, just having me as his wife, having that mentality about him should tell you what kind of man he is, right? And so think that way. Is this somebody that you will be okay years down the road? Is this somebody that you will be okay to have your kid look like? Because if he's... um. If he's somebody that's abusing you, somebody that's mistreating you, when you have children, it's what he is that he's going to transfer into the lives of those children as he raises them. And so if you don't like some of the things that you're seeing, don't ignore them thinking about only, oh, he looks good. Oh, he's handsome. Oh, he has money. Oh, he's, he has status. He's this and he's that. If you're looking at only those things to satisfy your flesh and satisfy your immediate desires, you are setting up literally a generation after you to fail and God doesn't like that. So you want to have that mentality when you're looking. Okay, yeah, guy, you 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 speak like you spit a good game. Yeah, you 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 talk a good talk, but is this somebody not only I can have children with, but somebody that can raise up kids in a godly way? That is a big indicator. So think that way. The other thing, the next thing that I want to talk about is leadership. The man is called to lead. Forget about what society is telling you today about men and women being equal. We are equal in God. But when it comes to our lives on earth, there is a divine order and standard. And the man is the head of the woman. The man is the covering of the woman. The Bible even says that the, uh, the woman is the glory glory of the man. So there is a divine order and the man is required to have some type of leadership um, abilities to him because he has to be able to guide you. He has to be able to lead you and your children, no matter how um, educated you are, no matter how uh, uh, how great of a status you have in society. You may be a boss in your at your job. You may have your own business and all of that. But the question is, um, is this somebody despite your status that you can find yourself submitting to? We're going to make another video later down the road concerning all of this. I'm actually going to make another live uh, going into depth about a wonderful story in 1 Samuel 25 read it um and then subscribe to the channel so that when we go live and have this wonderful discussion you can be a part of it okay so we're going to talk about a lot of, a lot more things concerning this please subscribe so that you get notified uh once i when i upload videos and when i go live but we're going to talk about first samuel 25 and how it applies to this in the, in, the, in the next live so you get subscribed anyways i was talking about leadership and the man being able to lead the man being able to lead somebody that you can find yourself submitted to when i before i got married like most of us submission is just is 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 a tough word like you mean despite my degrees and despite me being smart and all of this i have to like submit to a man like submitting to god i get because he's god he knows everything he's perfect he loves me all of that but man with his his mistakes and with his shortcomings you want me to do what listen to him and 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 and, and submit to his leadership and even when i don't agree and just go like that so think like that when you think like that it will tell you okay so if i have to i'm supposed to do this that means this person essentially is going to be responsible for my life 
he's going to be responsible for where I end up, whether I'm able to accomplish the things God has called me to do on, in the earth realm, whether that's just being a mom, whether that's running a business, that's whether that's preaching, whatever it is that God has called you to be, this man has to be, this man's influence over your life is going to determine whether you are able to accomplish whatever the Lord has, has assigned you to do in this earth. And so if you're choosing somebody that cannot lead you, if you're choosing somebody that's more, that's more worried about himself, he does not wait on God. He doesn't have a vision for his life. He cannot have a vision for your family. If he doesn't have a vision um, or he cannot even go to God to get direction for himself, he cannot go to God to get direction about you. So you have to be able to see, is this man able to lead me? Let me look at my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, yep, he has to have a vision for your life, uh, for his life and for yours. Um, because like I said, I've learned that our ability to follow and to submit, um, really depends on the man's ability to lead. Yes, as Christians, we're gonna, we, as Christian women, we learn to kill our flesh and we learn to do what we have to do. But I can tell you from experience that it's a hundred times easier when the man can definitely lead, when the man leads in love, when the man leads like Jesus. So you have to be able to make sure that this is somebody that you can submit to easily because if not, you're going to resent the fact that you have to submit to him. You're going to resent the fact that he has to lead you because you're like, you're not going anywhere. You are, you don't have any wisdom for your life. You don't have any direction for your life. And now you're trying to dictate me, especially if you're coming into the marriage or relationship as somebody that's independent, somebody that's got their lives figured out, somebody that's always done um, things that, that, that by themselves. Like you have to live Literally put all of that aside and follow somebody else's direction and leadership that you don't trust, that you don't think is a good leader, that you don't think they know where they're going. Like, if I had to follow a leader, I had to follow somebody, I'd rather somebody that knows where they're going or at least has an idea of where they want to go. So that when I follow you, even when you fall or when you, 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 you misstep, I'm like, okay, I can help you up. This is where we're going. Let's move forward. This is what we need. Let's move forward. But if you're just taking me in circles, if your, your life itself is just going in circles and getting messed up, you can't do that. Okay. I can't, I can't follow that. So make sure that you are thinking about what you're going to have to do in the marriage when you're choosing. Okay, because that's going to make or break you. All right. And the last thing that I want to address in this video is uh, um, uh, the fear of the Lord and wisdom. So we talked about we don't want just any man that goes to church. We don't want to go to any. We don't want any man, that, uh, just a guy that goes to church. We don't want just a guy that reads his Bible. We don't want just a guy that prays. We want somebody that exemplifies um, the fear, uh, the fruit of the spirit in his actual life. We want somebody that um, is led by the fear of the Lord. And when I talk about the fear of the Lord, I'm not talking about being scared of God. But they allow, when they're making their decisions every single day of their lives, they're thinking about God. They're thinking about how, what does God say about this decision that I'm making? What does God say about the direction that I'm going? What does God say about this thing that I'm about to do? They are literally allowing the thought, the, the mind that is set on God to dictate how they live their lives. That is a person that's not going to abuse you because they know, okay, wait, this person, this, this lady, this is God's daughter. I am called to represent Jesus in her life. I am called to love her and sacrifice for her like Jesus sacrificed for the church. And so I cannot mistreat her because I have to give God an account. That's God's daughter. That's God's princess. If I mistreat her, I have to give God an account. Okay, I cannot do this because if I do it, God is not going to be pleased. Like the, the fear of the Lord, the reverence that they have for God literally dictates how they live their lives. And anybody that, that, that lives that way, there's evidence for that in their lives, okay? And then you would recognize that um, in your conversations with them. And when you, while you're dating, while you're around them, the, the things that they say, you will know whether they even consider God in their thoughts, if they consider God in their relationship. Because again, this all will play back, uh, will play uh, into the whole submission thing. Again, we're going to have another video on all of this. So please subscribe, okay? It plays into the submission thing. Because even if I don't trust you as a man, even if you make mistakes as a man and it becomes difficult to, to, to follow you, the fact that I know that you go to God, the fact that I know that you fear God, the fact that I know that you are allowing the thought of God to dictate your decisions, I may not be a hundred percent for what you want to do, but I trust your trust in God.
Does that make sense? I trust that you went to God. I trust that your love for God is dictating your decision. So even though I may not agree with the decision, I will submit because at the end of the day, I know that you're going to try to honor God. And because you're honoring God, God will honor the decision. So it makes it easier to submit to a man that fears God. Because because he fears God, you know he's not going to do anything stupid. He's not going to do anything that is against the will or the, or the nature of God. Okay? And so I just wanted to make this quick video before I before I do the live, just so that you have an, uh, an understanding. Again, read 1 Samuel 25. We're going to get into it again. It's a beautiful, wonderful story uh, about this type of thing. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. That's it for this video. Uh, I will come back and we will continue the discussion in the next live. God bless you, sisters. Uh, choose wisely. Choose right wisely because your life and the lives of your children, the lives of generations to come literally, literally depends on on your ability to choose wisely okay don't let the superficial don't let the cuteness don't let the bank account the moolah the moolah moolah be what dictates your decision okay all right love you guys i see you in the next video